Assalamualaikum. My name is Wan Hanif bin Umar Asri. My nomenclature is AA200074. Now we talk about the introduction of manufacturing process for study chess. They are divided to three parts. First is the background study of study chess. Second is the objective, and finally is the project scope. Now I will talk about the background of study chess. A piece of human chess used to accommodate a person sitting or reclining with a backrest or armrest, and usually standing on all fours. In this era of modernization. The usage of chair is must for everybody. The chair has been widely used in the edges of world, such as in a household, office, and public transportation, and many more. The implementation of usage is very important because it will keep the good posture of our body. Now we go to the history of the chair. Chair is one of chair is one of the oldest furniture form dating back in third dynasty of the ancient Egypt. The earliest Egyptian chair often had a feet that resembled those animals. Chair are made of wire or convex wood and covered with a pad or cushion. In front, the square line of 69th century chairs gradually gave 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 way to more plush alfotory and sculptural arm that ended in scroll or animal heads. The back of the chair is gradually raised. And have a curved curved top. The armrests are sometimes padded. The seat is more wider. The wood is finely carved and glided or painted. Marshall Brewer and architect designer created the first tabular steel chair after World War One, and a cantilever structure with a firm form of continuous tabular strip, which is softly curved steel support and stitches leather leather alfotry. Louis Smith and Van der Rohe Barcelona chess from 1929 is contemporary classic. Lee Lee Corbusier, a Swiss-born architect, and Alva Aalto, a fine boss experiment with laminate bent wood chairs. The American chairs, the American chess M and Swiss M, as well as the Finn Aero Serin, expanded molded shape to hold seat in both plywood and plastic. The beam, the beam back and inflate, the beam back chair and inflated chair were two late 29th century innovation, also known as a leather back chair or wind coat chair. So, in this study, we want to know what the material that you that used for the study chair. There is a lot of material that can be part of the chair. Based on this study, we want to know what the best material for, in the form of strength, toughness, and also affordable price, and many more. In this study, we also talk about the process for the material that we choose for the study chair. For illustration, we choose carbon steel for the screw. Then we, then we will explain the source of the carbon steel until the process to get the screw. There are three objectives for this research. First is to study the different manufacturing process of study chair. Second is to investigate the advantages and disadvantages of the manufacturing process for the study chair. Third is to understand the different material for study chair part. Next, we go to project scope. This is technical bound the scope of manufacturing process of study chair. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hi. My name is Mama Akmal bin Abdul Halim, matrix number AA200308. So today, I'll be presenting regarding the product parts of chair. So, alright. Um, sitting is a straightforward activity. So it is an uncomplicated movement that we as human beings are capable of doing if one does not have any disability. Sitting is active and requires balanced movement, posture and control. Sitting is an innate behavior involving the body and mind. People sit in different ways and in different places. So to put it simply, you can sit down. This is how the chair appeared. A chair is a piece of furniture used to lie down, sit down, stand and relax. So here we analyze different parts of study chair which consists of chair seat, chair frame, rubber cover, screws. So these four components also called parts form the basis of chair. 
in fact what where I'm recording this video is what called chair alright so as I've mentioned all the four parts so it's shown we have chair seat chair frame rubber cover and screws alright now I'll be explaining regarding the chair seat so what is chair seat so this chair seat this chair seat pardon is a part of chair that people sit on However, it is important to take note that chair seats comes in various sizes and shapes. So for our group study chair, that is the example of the chair seat that we'll be analyzing. Alright, next, I'll be explaining regarding the chair frame. So as shown above, chair frame is a supporting like structure that gives an overall as to how the chair is supposed to form. So for our group study, the chair frame, which is the side part of the chair, shown so that is the frame this this and this that is the chair frame next i'll be explaining regarding the rubber cap so you all must be wondering what is the rubber cap so that is the rubber cap that we, um, i'll be explaining so this rubber cap is a multi-purpose item that often goes unnoticed this may be due to how small it is regardless of the reason the rubber cap for chair is often being underappreciated despite what they bring to the table the benefits of a rubber cap is mainly for safety purposes, which is to provide an even weight distribution from the chair to the floor. So for our group, the rubber cap of the study chair is shown above. Next, I'll be explaining regarding the last part, which is the screw. So, as shown, that is the screw that we that is on our case study, which is the study chair. So, study chair obviously is equipped with screws. So why is it equipped with screws? This is simply to make sure the study chair has good holding strength. The screws are highly resistant to rust and prevent moisture from coming in contact with this metal. Thus, the screw makes it a more preferable solution, uh, more preferable option to be applied on study chair compared to other options such as nails. Especially if it comes to a long-term usage, screws definitely outrun the nail. So for our group, the screw of the study chair is shown. Next, after explaining all of the above, I'm sure we have all come to a common term. My friend will be explaining regarding the materials production for the study chair. We'll be analyzing uh, each materials for the each, for each part. All right, that's all from me. I'd like to pass to my friend. Thank you. Hi, Assalamualaikum. My name is Omar Adin bin Mazlan. No, matrix number AA200949. So I'm going to talk about material production for the study chair. First material that we use is plastic. To produce plastic, scientists must start with a raw ingredient like crude oil and change them into workable polymer using heat, additive, manipulation and time. As with most chemistry, the procedure normally starts with the, with the raw material. Plastic produced with a proletarium based basis. Although crude oil is, a, is the primary component of this plastic, other elements such as salt, cellulose, natural gas, and coal are occasionally employed. The plastic production starts with extraction of material. Natural gas, crude oil, and coal are a complex mixture of thousand molecules must be treated. Then we have the refining process. Crude oil is transformed into various petroleum compounds, which are then processed into useful chemicals such as monomers, a molecule that is the basic building blocks of polymers. Crude oil is heated in a furnace before transported into a distillation machine, where heavy crude oil is separated into lighter component known as fraction. Uh, one of these naphtha is required for the production of vast amount of plastic. There are, however, other options such as using gas. Then we have polymerization, designed as ethylene, protiflene, butylene monomers are transformed into higher molecule with hydrocarbon into the petroleum industry polymers. When monomers are chemically linked into others, this will occur. There are two different mechanisms for polymerization. First, we have addition polymerization, where one of uh, when one monomers join to the next dimer, dimer to the next trim, trimer, and so on. This is known as the addition polymerization reaction. This is accomplished using a catalyst using peroxide. 
chain growth polymers are, are the result of this process, which add one monomer unit at a time. Polyethylene, polystyrene, and polynuclide are an example of additional polymers. Then we have condens condensation polymers. Condensation polymers is the process of connecting two or more monomers by, remo uh, by removing the molecules like water. The reaction between neighboring monomers are also necessita necessitates the use of catalyst because you can, for example, join an existing chain to another chain. This is known as step growth. Polyester and nylon are two examples of condensation polymers. Next, we have compounding process. Various of ma mixture materials are melt blended, combined by melting to create plastic formulations in compounding. This is usually accomplished with the use of extruder of some sort followed by the palletization of mixture. These pellets are subsequently transformed into a finished or semi-finished product via extrusion and molding technique. Compounding is usually done on twin screw extruder where pellets are processed into plastic items with dis distinctive design, diverse size, shapes, colors, and as well precise qualities according to the processing machine predefined setting. Next, we have the advantage and disadvantage just using plastic. The advantages of using plastic is because of its extreme vers versatility and resistance to chemical, water, and impact. The disadvantages is plastic at low temperature are embrittlement and plastic show deformation under load. Next, we have aluminium. The most abundant metal in the earth crust is aluminium. It is found in the form of aluminum oxide in bauxite, a type of mineral. The two primary raw materials used in production of aluminium are alumina and bauxite. The electrolysis of alumina produce pure aluminium metal. Next, uh, first uh, to extract uh, this uh, aluminium, we have bauxite mining. Bauxite is the primary raw material used in the pro production of aluminium. It is a tropical and subtropical clay mineral found in places like Australia and West Indies. Bauxite is frequently mixed, mined, mainly a few meters below ground level. For one ton of aluminium, about four to five tons of bauxite are required. The Bayer technique is used to extract pure aluminium. Then, the bauxite, we uh, call it bauxite grinding. The bauxite mineral is transported to refineries where the clay is removed and the bauxite is ground to create more consistent product. And then we have bauxite crushing and digesting. With caustic soda and sodium hydroxide solution, the pulverized mineral is poured into the enormous pressure tank and heated with steam. The aluminium compound in the bauxite mineral will react with the caustic soda to form a sodium aluminate solution known as slurry. The undesirable residue, also known as red mud, contains iron, silicon, and titanium gradually sink to the tank's bottom and are removed. Then we have settling. The sodium aluminate solution is pumped into the lower pressure settling tanks to remove excess red mud. The solution at the top tanks are directed downward through a series of filters to eliminate any particles in the solution. The residual alumina is passed through massive leaf and cloth filter. Next, we have precipitation. After cooling, sodium aluminate solution is poured into massive precipit precipitators, sometimes as tall as six story building. Sheet crystal of aluminium hydroxide are added to the solution to begin precipitation process. Large aluminium crystal form at this point. And then we have the calcination process. The crystal are subsequently roasted to the temperature of over 960 Celsius in rotating kilns. The re this remove any remaining impurities, leaving a white powder known as alumina or aluminium oxide, smelting, also known as the hard hero process, convert refined alumina into aluminium. For the last one, we have the smelting process. Alumina is put into a reduction cell containing melted cryolite at 950 degrees Celsius to disrupt the link between aluminium and oxygen. 400 kiloampere electrical currents are conducted through mixture, then output is 99.8% pure aluminium. The advantages of using aluminium for um, our chair is 
Aluminium is lightweight and corrosion resistant. The disadvantage is aluminium is sensitive to heat and conductor of heat and electricity. Next, the material that is used in component one of component of our study chair is rubber. Natural rubber is created by collecting a liquid sap known as latex from a specific tree. These are approximately 2,500 different varieties of tree that can generate this sap, including plants like the dandelions. But the heavier Brazilian tea or the rubber tree produce the vast majority of latex rubber manufacture. Next, uh, for the process, first we have the mastification. Batch of mastification of softening are commonly used. This procedure is carried out in the either bit enclosed mixing mixing machines or rubber rubber mills. The bamboo registered tapmark mixer is the most famous enclosed mill with a heavy steel counter rotating pedal in hourglass shape chamber that can accommodate up to half a ton of rubber. Two enormous horizontal opposed closely spaced steel cylinders up to 3 meter long rotate gently in opposite direction and slightly different speed are using in rubber mills. Rubber is shared and softened in the bamboo mixer's gap between the pedals and the wall as well as the roll mist gap. Then we have the mixing. Mixing is done on machinery that are similar to those used in mastification and it can be happen right after softening. A combination of shearing and mixing is used to introduce reactive ingredients, fillers, oil and various protective chemicals into the paste elastomer. As mentioned above, in just a few minutes, an enclosed bamboo type mixer can may create up to half a ton of mixed product. This rubber then sheet out spray with a release soap to keep it from adhering and kept until it, it's time to utilize it on steel pellets that can carry, carry up to a ton of rubber. Then we have shaping. The mixture can be shaped into the appropriate shape in, the, uh, in a very variety of methods. And threads are used to make long continuous items like tubing, tire threads, and wire wrapping. This, they are also utilized to make a variety of profile that can be cut to length later. White sheeting is produced using multi-roll calendar. This rubber mix is pumped via the channel channels into mold chamber to a desired shape in transfer and injection molds where it's cure under pressure. Tire are mix of variety of components including bead wire sidewall compound in a liner cord plies back package and thread which are brought together and constructed as wall tire before uh, sent to the curing process. And for the curing process, curing takes place in pressurized steel molds that are heated with steam or electricity to the temperature required for the interlinking process to occur. A temperature of 160 degrees Celsius is used to cure the product for many minutes. Because heat penetrates rubber slowly, thick objects require longer curing times and mod at moderate temperature up to several hours. To keep the proper shape and force trapped air to dissolve in the compound, pressure of 1 MPa or higher is usually applied. Steam heating in autoclave, microwave irradiation and transit through a hot bath of molten metal salts and fuel dyes bed are option for curing the mixed rubber after it has been mold. Curing is done near at atmospheric pressure in certain, in certain circumstances. The advantages and disadvantages of using rubber for our product is rubber is very versatile and provides excellent grip uh, with the floor. The, the disadvantages is rubber doesn't have a very life, a very long lifespan and not so sturdy properties. It has a higher cost than silicon. And for the last one, material that used uh, for our chair is carbon steel. Low carbon steel is a type of metal containing alloying elements composed of relative low carbon content. Typically, the carbon content is 0.05 to 0.3 percent, and to manganese content is 0.4 to 1.5 percent. Low carbon steel is one of the most common type uh, general purpose steel, and is often cheaper than other type of steel. Steel has property suitable for production of wide variety of commodities but commonly is produced in flat roll sheet or stripes strips so um, first and foremost uh, for the production um, we have blast furnace 
cook a higher carbon from a coal and iron or hematite are heated together until we are left with pure molten iron and slag a waste product which are both filtered out at the bottom of blast furnace then we straight into the melting shop the hot iron is taking is taken to a melting shop where it's mixed with recycled steel scraps and other alloys in the backseat oxygen furnace left with steel next we proceed to the rolling and stretching the steel in is cast and the rapidly and it rapidly roll and stretch then we have calling once uh, it is the size and length required they allow it to cool then we have the coating to make it more qualities coating steps need to be have by coating with zinc to make galvanized iron which can make it resistant to corrosion although we use carbon steel for chair frame there is better material for our frame which is carbon fiber this is uh, advan advantage and disadvantage of carbon steel in table below the advantages and disadvantages of using low carbon steel is low carbon steel is efficiently malleable and greatly affordable meanwhile the disadvantage is it is less stronger and limitation to heat treatment so this is a picture of uh, from raw material to uh, the product that we used uh, on our study chair thank you so much that is all from me assalamualaikum my name is muhammad arif bayrani my metric number is aa2034 so today i will continue our presentation good so uh, i will discuss uh, I will continue to discuss about a flow chart of manufacturing process of study chair. Okay, so as we can see at the slide right now, so this is a flow chart of a manufacturing process of study chair. Okay, first there are four main components or four main material that we use to produce the study chair, which is a plastic, aluminium, rubber, and carbon steel. Okay, in plastic material, uh, there are four uh, process to produce this material and next uh, aluminium okay aluminium there are uh, uh, seven process uh, to produce the aluminium so, uh, third is rubber so there are four uh, process to produce the rubber and next is a carbon steel there are uh, five process to produce the uh, carbon steel so for the plastic we uh, use that you you we use them to create the chair seat part and for the aluminium we uh, create we want it to create the chair frame part and for the rubber uh, we uh, create the rubber cap component and capacity we create the screw component when uh, after all the process uh, uh, after all the process we uh, forming uh, them and uh, di uh, then we can get the final product Okay, let's uh, move on to the next slide, which is advantage in manu manufacturing process of study chair. Okay, as we can see at, uh, at the slide right now. Okay, this is an uh, advantage in manu manufacturing process of study chair. Okay, we go for the plastic first, which uh, polyethylene terapeutic, which is we call it PET. Okay, in in produce plastic, uh, there are uh, some of uh, advantage in manufacturing process which consists environmental preservation first and second is reduce the environmental impact second is no drying of polymer is required and it is a saving energy and lastly is reduce cost and fashion fashion cost okay we go for the next is aluminium okay for the first advantage is a reduced loss of ha ha habitable land Second is reduce uh, emissions. Second, uh, third is a uh, reduced loss of fertile soil. Next is little energy input and high thermal stability. And next is a short processing time and high recovery of valuable metals. Okay, we go for the next is a rubber. Okay, for the advantage, they have they are have a five uh, advantage which consists reduce resource viscosity second is low cost third is producing large item and taking part and lastly is good tensile strength and extensibility 
Okay, and we go for the for a material which carbon steel. So there are uh, there are five uh, advantage in manufacturing process of a carbon steel, which consists low power requirement, improved strain, large deformation can be accomplished, accomplished, and next is low cost and hard protect against the damage. Okay, we go for the for the next slide, which uh, the advantage in manufacturing process of steady chair. Okay, first we go for uh, the plastic. Okay, for the uh, the advantage of manufacturing process of steady chair in a plastic, uh, the first uh, disadvantage is uh, harm the environment. Second is high pro operating cost. Third is difficult to control and difficult to bond. Next is uh, aluminium, which uh, we use the bauxite. So for the the advantage in manufacturing process of uh, aluminium, which consists of dust pollution, bigger vibration, high maintenance, long term product production, and water pollution. So this is a uh, the advantage of aluminium uh, material. So we go for the next slide, and third is a rubber. Okay, this is, uh, so there are four the advantage in manufacturing process of the rubber. So the first is require special mechanical equipment, needs latex supplementary process, increased labor cost and require highly skilled labor. Okay, uh, last we go for the carbon steel. Okay, there are uh, five the advantage in manufacturing process of that of uh, carbon steel. We consider consume of considerable amount of energy, high step up fields. Close tolerance cannot be maintained, noise pollution and degradation process will happen. Okay, so we go for the next slide, which type of machine in manufacturing process of study chair. Okay, there are a uh, set uh, type of uh, machine that we identify, uh, which is the first is two row rubber mill machine. Okay, for this machine, its function is related to the process rubber medication. So, material to produce is a uh, rubber, which is which is a uh, cap component. Okay, we go for the next uh, ma machine, which plastic compounding machine. Okay, for this machine, its uh, function is related to plastic compounding process. Okay, material to produce for this machine is a uh, plastic, which uh, which uh, which in this case we uh, want to produce the chassis part. Okay, we go for the third machine. Which is bauxite grading mill machine. Okay, for this machine, it's related to the uh, bauxite grading process. Okay, material to produce is uh, aluminium. Uh, aluminium, which is in the case we want to uh, produce the char frame part. Okay, we go for the next slide. Okay, this is third. Uh, this is a four machine, which is a uh, rolling mill machine. Okay, for this machine, it's related to rolling process. And material to produce is a uh, carbon steel, and uh, as we as we discussed before, uh, we want from the carbon steel we want to create the screw component, and we go for a five uh, machine which uh, which is is a metal smelting furnace machine. Okay, this machine related to the smelting process, which okay. Uh, so material to produce for from this machine is aluminium, which in this case we want to create the char from part. Cha uh, chair frame part okay so we go for the last machine which is a calculation furnace machine okay for the machine is related uh, to the calculation process okay material to produce is aluminium which is in this case is about a uh, chair frame part okay so there is a set type of machine that we uh, can discuss okay so that's all from our group uh, and thank you